Hey guys, thanks for tuning in Alliance Tech. So today we're going to be working on a, a motor. Uh, customer already diagnosed, already replaced it, but it's uh, very interesting that he found a motor that had a phase problem. Not a grunt, not a shorted motor, a phase problem. So the motor was tip, uh, uh, it was tripping the brake every once in a while, but it would run, it would run. So he went ahead and replaced the motor. But uh, we're going to find out why. He actually found it out already by tearing apart the motor, but so you don't have to go in this depth of it or even bigger motors if you inspect all the windings that so takes a lot of time you can use a milliometer here or um, in this case uh, in this kind of type of failure here you can actually use uh, a high-end uh, ohm uh, a fluke meter here it doesn't give you a precise reading like the milliometer will but it does give you a reading it's a little different here so let me uh turn the lights back on here and uh get, get this, this this going here so uh, uh, first, we're gonna, first we're gonna do is gonna check it with uh, regular ohm meter here. I already did uh, reel out the leads, so the leads are reeled out. Uh, and reel them out again. Reel out. Um, okay, so we're on low ohm value, and I did reel out the leads here. Okay, cool. Uh, we are we are we are reeled out. So leads are calibrated to their length right now. So we're going to go ahead and go through and check this now. So we're going to go from line one here, um, line one to line two, and we're going to get the reading here. So line one to line two, um, we are at one point one four, one point. 1 point, 1 point, uh, let's see, 1 point 136. So, 1 point 136. Okay. Uh, this is above 1 ohm, so this meter is going to read it very well. The below 1 ohm, uh, bigger motors will be below 1 ohm. So this is kind of a small motor. Uh, here, this is a 10 horsepower motor. So now we're going to go to line one, to line three. Okay, line one to line three, we are reading 1.233. Okay, that's, that's a lot different. So 1.136 to 1.233, and then we're going to go to line two to line three. Uh, 1.246, 1.246. Okay, all right, and now we're going to compare it to the readings we get on a milliometer, which are going to be pretty comparable. As this, uh, this meter does have a low ohm value reading in it, but it does not really read correctly below 1 ohm. So since we're above 1 ohm, we're going to just compare it to our milliometer here. We're going to set this to 200 milliohms since we're above 1 ohm. 1,000 a thousand, a thousand milliohms is 1 ohm. So let's go ahead here, and we're going to go to... Uh, it's, it gets a nice connect, connection points here. We can tie this meter onto it, clamp it onto a nice. There, you, make sure you get the, the these things. Go, make sure you get all strands in there because they'll be different. Um, so the black one goes on the outer. So line one, uh, uh, we're gonna put that on this one on line two. So line two, the black goes to the outer, and your sensor lead reading it goes to the inner. So here you go. Make sure you're clamped on the wire good. There. And same thing with line one here. We're going to go to line one and make sure the green is on the outer. Make sure red is on the inner. Okay, here we go. I'm just going to go through and test that right now. And we are going to be at 1151. So the first one, line one, to line two is 1151. 1152. Cool. All right. Um, it'll still stop. And once it stops, we'll move to the next one. So it holds it. Okay, we're good to go. And now we're going to go to line two to line three. There. Okay, cool. Wow, big jump. 1248. So we'll probably go to 1249. So.
almost the same readings as, as my other meter here. But this milliometer is really designed to go below 1 ohm. So between 0 ohms and 1 ohm. This is just the difference between the two meters. So uh, 1249. Okay, I like the whole feature on that. That's really nice. So, and then we're going to go to line 2 to line 3. Go to the outside. Go to the on the inside. Okay, we are clamped on there again. Alright, cool. Alright, 12.59. For us, that's a large, that's, that's a big number, so 12.59. So, we're going to that's big, so. Alright guys, so what we're going to do is we have a smaller number here. Let's, let's, get, let's, let's check the percentage on this real quick. And I said 3%, right? So, So it's eight and a half percent out. So this motor is bad. So we're at eight and a half percent right now. Um, so the reason why this motor is at eight and a half percent is because it's something very, you can physically see it. <laughs> you can see the issue. So let, let me show you here. Let me grab my little flashlight here. Let me show you what's going on over here. So if you look here, probably you might not see this, but look at that right there. Yep. So like a piece, of, like a nicked it here or whatever nicked it, uh, nicked it there. It looks like maybe a piece of ice got stuck on the fan of the motor. Has a little fan built into it, and it, it probably slung and cut this or nicked it first and cut it. Um, typically, it wouldn't be like it did it over here too. You can see right there, it kind of did the same exact thing to that winding over there. So, um, yeah, it's not supposed to be. Uh, they're supposed to be within 3% and we are 8.5. Um, so that's why it's good to have really good meters to be able to check that. Because this motor was running, but every once in a while it just tripped the breaker. We got, I was like, I don't know why it keeps tripping. So, but that, that's why. That is, that's why. So this digital milliometer, it, it does do a higher ohms. You can go all the way up to uh, 2,000 ohms with this meter. But all the way uh, um, from 200... Uh, uh, milliohms is uh, up to 200 milliohms and up to 2,000 milliohms in settings. So you, between on your between your setting, if your scale goes to one. You got to move it up. You're up another setting here. The same thing here. You got a low ohm value here on this meter here. That's what I use. I did. I didn't reel out the leads, uh, so I wasn't uh, measuring the resistance of the leads here, and I was able to check the windings. Um, and the readings are pretty much almost identical. Not really identical, but um, if you take the decimal point out. The uh, fluke meter was one 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 three six, or one or put the decimal point des, decimal point back in, one point one three six ohms, and uh, the milliometer was one point one five two ohms on the on the first one there uh, from line one to line two, line line one to line three on the fluke was one point two three three, and on the on the on the ampro milliometer was one point two four nine, and on the um, the fluke for line uh, two to line three was 1.246, and on the milliometer it was 1.259. So uh, that is uh, pre pretty pretty comparable. They actually did a very good job doing it. Like, then again, we're above one ohm. So um, when I get a bigger motor that has a similar issue, I'll show you guys how this wh wh why I originally bought this motor because. Some of these bigger motors, the resistance is so low that these meters can't pick them up. Uh, you can't pick up that resistance. But this meter, kind of cheating, does have a low ohm, low ohm value on it, so it was able to read out uh, three extra digits out after the decimal point. Usually, some meters won't read that out. It'll read like one decimal point after 1.2, 1.1. But if you're a 2.59 and you're at like two, um, like say, let's say 1.259, and then you're 1.2. Where's the rest of the numbers? You don't have those numbers, so you need those numbers to be able to compare to make sure you're within that 3%. So thanks for tuning in, you guys. Like, Make sure you like and subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one.